Hello everyone, uh, Dr. Omende again. So we continue with our series on the cerebrum. So today we are going to discuss on the white matter. And um, white matter is made up of myelinated uh, axons of neurons. So uh, these are divided into association fibers, commissural fibers, and projection fibers. So association fibers connect different functional areas within the same hemispheres, different functional areas within the same hemisphere of the cerebrum. So I, I, we have these examples, superior and inferior longitudinal fasciculus, that's the superior longitudinal fasciculus and the inferior longitudinal fasciculus. The cingulum within the cingulate gyrus, so that's the cingulum just above the corpus callosum. Then we have the ancinate fasciculus, that's the ancinate connecting front of the temporal lobe, and we have the acute um, fasciculus, which we had already discussed. So um, these connect different functional areas within the same hemisphere. That's a singular above the corpus callosum, that's the superior longitudinal gyrus, ancinate uh, uh, causes this way, and then of course the acute that connects the brokers and monikis areas. Again, that's the acute fibers connecting um, brokers to one in case area. Then we have commissural fibers. Commissural fibers connect parts of the right and left hemispheres that subserve the same function. So like primary motor on the right to the primary motor on the left hemisphere. And the main uh, example is the corpus callosum. So that's uh, corpus callosum connecting um, two functional areas that subserve the same function on the different hemispheres. We also have the habenular commissure, anterior and posterior commissure, as well as the hippocampal commissure. So this medial surface of the brain shows you the anterior commissure just below the uh, lamina terminalis, that, that's the anterior commissure, and the posterior commissure is located just below the pineal gland, that's the pineal gland there. These are the tectum, the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus, so that's the posterior commission. So then thirdly we have the projection fibers and these maintain connection between cortical and subcortical areas. So we have corona radiata, optic radiation, auditory radiation and uh, um, some tracts that come from the cerebral cortex like corticospinal tracts and these are usually within the, the corona radiata. So these fibers from the cortex to subcortical regions, this forms the uh, corona radiata, but we also have optic um, radiation. Optic radiation will connect the primary visual center to the um, lateral geniculate body. And then we also have the auditory radiation from the medial geniculate body of the thalamus to the auditory, uh, primary auditory center, which we say is at the transverse gyra of Heschel on the superior temporal gyrus. Then we'll discuss the basal ganglia, which are also called the basal nuclei. And remember, nuclei are connection of cell, uh, neuronal cell bodies within the CNS. And uh, um, collection of neuronal cell bodies in the PNS, that's called a ganglion. But in this case, we call this the basal ganglia, where you have neuronal cell bodies at the base of the brain. So we have different components of the basal ganglia. We have what we call the corpus striatum, and corpus striatum is made up of the caudate, putamen, and globus pallidus. Then we have the striatum. Striatum is just caudate and putamen alone. And then we have lentiform nucleus, which is formed by putamen and globus pallidus. So you need to understand these terms. Corpus striatum involves the three, while striatum is only caudate and putamen, and lentiform nucleus has the putamen and the globus pallidus. Other parts of the basal ganglia include the substantia nigra, amygdala, claustrum, red nucleus, and subthalamic nuclei. So these are the uh, parts of the basal ganglia. So that's a caudate nucleus, okay? That's a caudate nucleus. This is the thalamus, all right? Then this is the putamen and the globus pallidus. So we have said the three of them are called corpus striatum, caudate, putamen, and globus pallidus. While putamen and globus pallidus together form the lentiform nucleus, while striatum is formed by caudate and putamen alone. Then other parts, we have substantia nigra. Substantia nigra is located on the uh, 
um, uh, this lower aspect, okay? Mainly we also find it at the midbrain. Then we have the subthalamic nucleus there, all right? And this is the thalamus. This is a lat uh, the lateral ventricles. These are the lateral ventricles where CSF flows. And this is the third ventricle, all right? So phylogenetically, the um, basal ganglia is divided into three. We have the archistriatum that's mainly made up of the amygdala. Uh, then development, uh, evolution occurred. Then we had paleostratum that formed, which is mainly the globus pallidus. And as evolution continued, neostriatum formed. And that's where, that involves the caudate and the putamen. So that is what we mean by phylogenetic uh, classification. It was, it's based on the evolutionary development. So mainly the function of the basal ganglia is to coordinate um, movement and some of these areas um, form uh, part of the extrapyramidal um, system. So again, these are the lateral ventricles and this is the third ventricle. So on the lateral aspect of the lateral ventricle, we have caudate nucleus and the thalamus. And then that's the lentiform nucleus that has the globus pallidus and the putamen. So this is the lentiform nucleus. While caudate and putamen together, we say they form the striatum. Then the three of them will form corpus striatum. So again, this is how the, uh, the nuclear of the basal ganglia look like. That's the globus pallidus. That's the head of caudate. You need to know the parts of the caudate nucleus. So it has a head and a body. It also has a tail. All right, then this is the optic tract, that's the amygdaloid nucleus, this is the thalamus. Globus pallidus is beneath the, the putamen. Again, this is how the basal ganglia looks like. So again, remember, this is the lateral ventricle, which has anterior part or the anterior horn. This is the posterior horn with its trigone and the inferior horn. So lateral to... Uh, the lateral ventricle, that's where we find the caudate nucleus. So the head of the caudate is there. That's the body. And that's the tail of caudate. Remember, the amygdaloid nucleus is to the extreme end of the tail of caudate. And that's the thalamus. So this is the caudate nucleus. And that's the thalamus on the lateral aspect of the lateral ventricle. Again, this section of the brain, you need to know it very well. When you get a chance to go to the lab, make sure you're able to identify all these parts. These are the lateral ventricles emptying into the third ventricle through the interventricular foramina of Monroe. So that's the third ventricle. Then this is the caudate and the thalamus again. Then they are separated from the lentiform nucleus by the internal capsule. So this is the anterior limb of internal capsule, the genu and the posterior limb of internal capsule. Then this is the putamen and the globus pallidus. Then after the lentiform nucleus, we have the, we have the external capsule. This is internal capsule. Internal capsule is made up of white matter. Remember, the basal ganglia are gray matter, neuronal cell bodies. Internal capsule is white matter, where you have myelinated tracts passing. Then this is the external capsule. After the external capsule, we usually have what we call the, the claustrum, which is uh, gray matter. You can appreciate it at this point. After the external capsule, which is the white, we have a gray strip, that is the claustrum. After the claustrum, we have the extreme capsule of white matter, extreme capsule, before you get to the insular cortex, which we had already discussed, and we say the insular cortex forms the primary gustatory area. So this section of the brain is very, very important. The lateral ventricles, foramen of Monroe, the third ventricle, caudate, thalamus, internal capsule, then globus pallidus and putamen before you get to external capsule. Then there's a strip of gray matter here, which is called the claustrum. After the claustrum, we have the extreme capsule before you get to the insular cortex around the uh, Sylvia's uh, fissure. So the input to the basal ganglia is usually through the striatum. And striatum is made up of caudate and putamen. So input in, uh, from the cortex to the striatum, we call that corticostriate, and these are usually glutaminergic fibers. From the thalamus to the striatum, the thalamostriate are also glutaminergic. From substantia nigra, 
part which we call the pass compactor. We call the pathway negrostride from you name these pathways from origin to termination. So from uh, negrostride from substantia nigra to the striatum. And these are dopaminergic pathways. Then from the raffi nucleus uh, to the striatum, these ones use serotonin. So then we uh, we have gabagic fibers, which are usually inhibitory, cholinergic are usually excitatory, and dopaminergic fibers are usually involved. Uh, when there's lesion in the dopaminergic fibers, we call that Parkinson's disease. So really, this shows you the input to the um, basal ganglia. So from the cortex to the ganglia, corticostriate, from the thalamus to the ganglia will be thalamostriate, from substantia nigra to the uh, ganglia will be negrostriate. Output from the basal ganglia usually are from the globus pallidus to substantia nigra, red nucleus, and subthalamic nucleus. And these most of the time are gabagic, which are inhibitory. So you need to know input comes from where? To the striatum, from the cortex, thalamus, and the substantia nigra. And the output is from globus pallidus. Where do the outputs from the basal ganglia go to? Substantia nigra, red nucleus, and the subthalamic nucleus. So again, that's just a diagram to show you from uh, the cortex to the striatum, all right? But from the striatum, you can take the information to other areas through the globus pallidus to some thalamic nucleus. So output is through globus pallidus, while input is through striatum, from the thalamus to cortex to striatum. Input is through the striatum, output is through globus pallidus. So the intrinsic connections of the basal ganglia, we have the direct and indirect pathways. The direct pathways are from the striatum to globus pallidus internal uh, segment and substantia nigras pass reticulata while indirect pathways will involve the globus pallidus um, to the thalamus or to the thalamus. So basal ganglia lesions, a good example is uh, Parkinson's. Remember the function of basal ganglia is to coordinate movement. So lesions of basal ganglia involve abnormal movement. Uh, to remember the symptoms of Parkinson's, we use the acronym TRAP. And remember Parkinson's is caused by lesions of the dopaminergic neurons. These are originating from the substantia nigra, so mainly the ni na negrostriate pathway. So we have tremors. The T is for tremors at rest. R is for rigidity. A is for akinesia or dyskinesia, meaning slow or lack of movement. And then P is for postural defects. And Parkinson's is treated by giving levodopa. Uh, you cannot give dopamine itself. You give le levodopa because levodopa will cross the blood-brain barrier. Then we also have Huntington's chorea due to degenerating uh, striatum. We have what you call acetosis, and we have hemibalismus that is due to lesions in the subthalamic nucleus. So all these basal ganglia lesions are characterized by abnormal movements. There is no coordination of movement. And remember trap in Parkinson's, and the tremors are usually tremors at rest, and these are different from tremors in cere cerebellum uh, lesions, which we shall discuss. Cerebellar lesions are present with intentional tremors. Thank you very much.